guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to the Frostbite Tribe. In the last episode, just as we were finishing some of our very last preparations to take us over to the mountain biome, a certain little panda rudely interrupted by cannonballing his way right into the ocean. So little Kirkir has been the topic of discussion and much debate within our tribe because we weren't sure if we wanted to maybe swap him out with one of our current babies and bring him along with us. He does have his positives, of course, mainly in the immunity gene that he's carrying. We don't currently have access to immunity I, so that would be a very beneficial thing for us to bring with us. But he also has some glaring negatives like the crippled paw that he's carrying, and of course his infertile gene. I'm a little bit leery about possibly introducing these things to our tribe, because of course we haven't had to deal with the uh, crippled paw yet since Adam didn't have one, and we've never seen the infertile gene before. This doesn't actually mean that he's completely infertile though. I noticed there was a little bit of confusion surrounding these genes. Basically both of them stack, so even though he has one infertility gene, he also has a two on the bottom slot. So that means his entire fertility stat is two. That's still very, very low though, compared to what we have in our tribe currently, like um, Cloud has a six infertility, both of her slots are um, three. So she has a very, very high fertility, and I think that might mean that she's a little bit more likely to have twins too. Not entirely sure on that, but at least it means that we will be less likely to see that failed breeding notification on the side of our screen. So while most of you agree that it would probably not be worth the risk to actually bring Kier Kier with us, a good compromise might might be to breed him with some of our females before we leave. So I thought it was very, very fitting that he jumped straight out of the darkness or the grass over on this side of the island where our big cat family called their home. And he is sitting right next to Cloud now too, and I wondered if maybe they were friends before we even knew about Kier Kier. She did spend a lot of her time just minding her own business back here. We didn't spend a lot of time paying attention to her, so maybe she grew lonely and she found this creature off in the darkness and got to know him when they were kids. So I'm assuming that they probably know each other quite well and maybe that's why he was so frantic. Maybe he didn't want to steal the spot of one of our creatures but he just wanted to say goodbye to her because he knew this was his last chance. She probably thought that she was going to spend her entire life on this island anyway, especially because she doesn't have the ram horns that Anna Ismi has, and all of these other creatures who are very connected to the goddess of war. So we might say that before their great migration began, they had attempted to start a family of their very own, and this will be our chance too to see exactly how hard it is to actually breed these creatures when they're so low on fertility. So I do have the notification wall pulled up on the side, and hopefully that means I will be able to catch if they don't actually um, successfully breed, that is something that I'm going to have to get very, very used to. I mean, we have been playing this game for almost a year now. It has almost been that long and I am so used to just pressing that one button and skipping the day and finding our new baby waiting in the nest that it has taken me quite a while to get used to the possibility of the breeding failing. But we're going to give it a shot now. I guess then we should probably use Cloud's energy first because I would like to move Kier Kier out of the way if possible. So let's see if the first attempt is going to work. Did it actually work? It says that it didn't, but she does appear to be pregnant, so maybe that's a glitch. Like, another weird thing is that when I loaded up the game, it was actually raining, and I'm pretty sure we were like in the middle of a drought when we ended before. So I'm not sure what's up with that either, but it does seem like she is actually pregnant. So I'm going to assume that that notification was actually a little bit of a glitch, which is going to be very confusing later on. Honestly though, this is a much less risky situation than actually changing him with one of our current creatures, because now we still have our core strong group coming with us to the mountains, but we also have the possibility of maybe getting those special genes if we're very, very lucky. So let's move Kier Kier out of the way. He has said his goodbyes, and now he can move back down the shore and stay with all of our other creatures out here. They can all um, get to know Kier Kier, Kier the panda who looks very very similar somebody pointed out to maybe our god of the harvest maybe that was a little bit of a sign from him because he does have the cracker jaw somebody actually mentioned that maybe he was trying to trick us with the panda patterns too which i thought was absolutely adorable that sounds like something van Kier would do if he was feeling very neglected to try to get our attention but speaking of attention i do believe we had some bunnies back here so let's see if we can find them again oh you're way out there now okay yeah these two brothers were trying their best to catch some more bunnies, though unfortunately Kirinu is going to have to train his very young brother how to not scare 
of the bunnies away. So that bunny is way down here on the shore. I guess if we have Kuvan try to outrun the bunny this way, then maybe he can loop around and lead him back toward his brother. Let's try having him jump right here so that the bunny will at least get pinned between them. And now we can actually see the bunny too, which is going to be a huge help. Kiernu can jump way down on the shore, jump on the bunny, and then slice it up. There we go. So on the next turn, we can pick up that bunny meat and bring it along with us to the next island. We'll have to remember to have some of our creatures actually slice the berry bushes too if they can. Um, some of them are going to be a little bit too weak to do that. Let's see, can Anna Anna actually slice them? No, she can't either because she doesn't have the claw. She only has a spiky body giving her um, attack strength. So she's going to have to make do just picking the berries herself. Well, maybe um, Van Van Ro and I suppose even Kiernu could come over here and slice the berry bushes. Now we can have Anna Ismi finally start making her way right over to the ports. And in fact, we can sit her right over here. And then on the next turn, we'll just scoot her a little bit further up. We'll want her to actually um, make the journey for our creatures after all. She's going to click the tile. Now Squall is going to need just one extra turn to get over to these ports. He is almost going to be fully grown by the time we finally get to the mountains, but we are are going to do it today. There is no other option. Anna Ismi is finally going to lead us to the mountain biome. So let's go ahead and skip the day and then make some of our very last turns on this island. We can bring Anna Ismi right up here. Now she's almost out of turns herself, so she's going to have to have her babies as soon as possible, right when we land in the mountains. And then we can move Squall right up here next to her. And there we go. We have all of our creatures ready to head into the snow. All we have left to do is collect a little bit more of this food back here. Kiernu can go ahead and um, pick up this food. Then he could scoot over here and slice this berry bush for us. Then we can have Van Van Ro maybe come up here and um, slice this one after Sariko picks some of her berries. She can pick from these as well so that we can slice both of the berry bushes and get all of that extra food. Look at that. The extra food, the um, extra nesting material too, which is very important for us to take with us. And are there any roots that um, Kier Kier could actually dig up? Let's see. Let's sniff around a little bit. Oh my gosh, we sat you right in the middle of all of these tasty roots. Excellent. So this isn't going to be too much food because um, he can only dig up one at a time, but every little bit counts when you're traveling to a brand new island. And I believe that is officially the end of this one. So let's bring their little brother Kuvan up here so he can wave goodbye to his family. And then we'll have Queen Anna Ismi finally lead her entire tribe to their new home. So I'll see you guys as soon as we get to the mountains. Well, we made it, but it looks like we are completely surrounded by leeches. Oh, that is not a very welcoming sight four leeches in the water. We are going to have to be very, very careful as we maneuver our way around here. But look at this place. This giant mountain that we have to explore. We have all of these little grasslands kind of scattered right on the very outskirts of the island. So plenty of opportunities for us to actually gather food because we have quite a few trees. That is going to be very, very appealing to some of our cracker jaw babies, I think. Leo in particular and Rosette, they are going to be some of our main gatherers in this line. So they're technically our omega just like I explained in the last episode. So they're probably going to hightail their way straight into um, the grasslands as soon as possible. Leo, Rosette, and I believe also Dandelion would very much enjoy trying to find some of those berry bushes to settle down by. Meanwhile, we definitely want to make sure that Roku breeds with Anna Ismi. And let's see, we already have a leeches sticking to us. Oh no, one of our creatures has a parasite. Which one is it? You, poor little Dandelion. Oh my gosh, we need somebody to help you out. All of these leeches are like moving straight in on us too. So this is a little bit concerning. Let's actually move Dandelion over here, away from the water side a little bit, and then maybe Leo could come up this way. Oh my gosh, he already found a healing fruit, really? Well, that's a good sign. That's a very, very lucky sign. And right next to um, another one of those berry bushes as well. So that is very good for us. But we need Leo to go ahead and remove that pesky, pesky leech from you. It does seem like um, Anna Ismi actually succeeded in breeding this time, but she can't build her nest on these ports. So I guess she's going to have to um, use her last turn for the day to scoot a little bit further down. 
that means that she's only going to be able to have one more baby on this island, which is really, really unfortunate. But at least she has a very strong baby in Squall who should be able to look after his sibling, whatever it happens to be. Hopefully it's going to be just as strong as Squall though with his double claws. He is really going to help us out when the very nasty predators start stumbling down the mountainside. Let's take a quick look around here to see what we have um, to use to our advantage though. It looks like we have a lovely stream cutting right down the mountain, so hopefully we can find some fish in here. Quite a few of our creatures have the fishing tail, I believe, so that should be a very beneficial thing for us. We have some hot springs too. These are so cute that we can actually sit our creatures in if they get too cold. Um, I don't think these trees do anything. I don't think we can gather anything from those, but we will investigate that. These are the special plants that I spoke about a couple episodes back. That'll give us some nesting material if we collect from them. And then this thing over here, this is what I'm probably going to make a beeline toward because this has a very special surprise waiting inside. So hopefully we can bring some of our creatures over that way to investigate very, very shortly. But first we're going to have to have everyone try to make their way around these leeches. Oh my gosh. I think somebody is probably going to get this one stuck to them at least. And Coco, maybe you could just jump right here, kind of sacrifice yourself for us so that Leo can um, pick the parasite off of you. And then we don't have to worry about that anymore. And we also get the little extra food. So why don't you peek in this grass so we know that that's there. And then you can um, start collecting berries for us. She's probably going to be one of our hunters though, even though she was technically part of the gathering line. I think she's more suited to being a hunter because she's so fast with her double running legs. So hopefully that means she'll be able to scout out some of those bunny burrows. The many, many bunny burrows on this island. That is a little bit concerning. Hopefully we can keep up with the bunny population this time and it won't get totally out of control like our last islands. Let's move Dandelion off this way so that he can get a little bit closer to that tree over here because we do want him to hopefully collect some of the acorns that drop around the uh, base of the tree. And he is scouting out more berry bushes too, so very, very good things for us. We do need to find those sources of food as soon as possible. We could move Rosette right over to this one, in fact, and maybe she could um, use this as her base of operations. We definitely want to clear out this area anyway because we have a healing fruit, so it's a very, very important place for our tribe. Now, Cloud, I mean, since um, Anna Ismi is not going to be able to give birth on this turn, why don't we move Cloud right next to the healing fruit? And then we'll have her drop down a nest so we can see what um, her baby is going to be like. We are going to have to modify the mutation menu though. It would probably be a good idea for us to place the running leg in the 30% slot for that extra chance that we won't see the no pawn or baby. And then I suppose just the normal eyesight because he did have the blindness in his genetics. Thankfully, she has the normal eyes in both of her slots. Otherwise, we would be in a little bit of trouble right now. She was the only female aside from the queen herself who did not have similar immunity genes to Kier Kier. So fingers crossed that that means that this is going to be a very, very lucky baby. Now let's move the rest of our warriors and hunters around too. I suppose we would probably want our hunters to make their way up the stream maybe to try to scout out some of these bunny burrows. I don't want to separate them too much because I also want them to, of course, to make their way straight over to um, this special little rock. So let's have Roku start going off this way so that he can at least keep an eye on some of our gatherers since they are are trying to get over to um, the tree. And then Strawberry and Kernuta could maybe travel around the opposite way to see what's on the other side of the island. So we'll have Strawberry make her way right to his other side. And um, yeah, I guess this will be an area where we could hopefully uh, possibly fish. Let's have them jump right up here so they can investigate the hot spring too. Look at this, how adorable is this? Let's have Strawberry sit right inside the very first hot spring so she'll be nice and toasty warm. We don't have to worry about it too much right now because of course it's not snowing yet, so they should be um, warm anyway, but just in case somebody gets a little bit too cold, we know to settle them right inside the hot spring. Now I think that's all of the turns that we can make, so let's skip our very first day on the mountainside and of course see what Cloud's little baby is going to look like. All I can see is that she has the cracker jaw, which is quite interesting. Do you have the no paw too? Oh no, she has the crippled paw, and she also inherited the um, infertile trait from her father. She didn't even inherit any of those special 
special immunity genes. Not the one from Cloud, not the one from Kier Kier. Oh, that is very unfortunate. But we tried. I mean, all we can say is that we tried our very best, but it did not work out in the way we intended. I think I will name her Faith, though, because it was kind of like a leap of faith on our part to accept Kier Kier into our family. So we tried our best, and she still will be able to help us with her cracker jaw and whatnot, but it won't be the most beneficial baby for us to breed in the future. Now, of course, we need to turn our attentions to Queen Anna Ismi on her very final day. She must be so happy, so proud of herself for actually fulfilling the role that her mother gave to her. She managed to lead them over here. Even if she didn't have much time to spend on this island, she still managed to get them here and hopefully set them up very, very safely next to all these healing fruits, next to all these berry bushes. I think her mother and Anna Meme too would be very, very pleased with her efforts. So we'll have her use a little bit more of that nesting material to build her own nest, and then we'll adjust the mutation menu again for her baby. I believe the last time we placed the um, big body in the 30% slot, and then we placed the medium tail in the 10% slot, because we want to see that extra little bit of cold resistance pop up on their babies. Um, hopefully this one is also going to have the big body just like Squall, and in fact, he can take on his final gem. Look at you, little Squall, all grown up. Naturally, because of his strength, he would probably be one of the top choices to lead the island after this, but we'll have to see what this little baby looks like too, because of course, just because he's the firstborn doesn't mean that he's guaranteed to have that job. But let's have him move off this way so he can spend his mother's final day with her and keep her safe too and his newest little um, sibling. He's going to want to make sure that his new brother or sister is going to be safe off in the mountains. And in fact, let's sniff around again because I'm sure a lot of stuff spawned on that very first night, but so far I don't see anything, so we'll just have to keep our eyes open for potential dangers. <laughs> now, Strawberry, you look so relaxed in that hot spring, but I think we are going to move you right out of there so you can hopefully find some more um, resources for us. And in fact, why don't you go ahead and gather up this little twig bush? That gives us quite a bit of nesting material, so we should have um, plenty of opportunities to have some more babies out on the road. We do have some permanent nests back here that we can see, actually. That's good. We know it's right by um, one of these rivers, so if we have a fishing family, that would probably be a pretty good spot for them to set up camp. But let's have Kiranuta follow Strawberry because we don't want her getting too separated. And we also want them to hopefully loop around to one of these um, bunny burrows. In fact, let's go this way so we can light up the path toward um, the special stone. And oh my gosh, there was one of the bunnies already sitting right on top of the burrow, looking very suspiciously at our little ice rock. So let's move Kiranuta maybe right here so that they're both very close and hopefully on the next turn they can grab one of those bunnies for us. You guys, in the meantime, are just going to have to um, gather up all of the food that we have in the area. We'll have Leo actually pick up some of this grass so we don't lose this healing fruit. And then why don't we actually swap his place with Coco because he does have the nimble fingers, so he would be better suited to collecting the berries anyway. Coco can go down this way to um, follow the rest of this group toward the tree. And then we can have Leo sit right here and actually maybe keep um, the queen and her children safe with his big stinky tail. That is the hope that the stinky tail is going to maybe deter some of the predators from munching on our creatures. We'll have to see if that works out. Um, Cloud is going to stay right next to her baby, so why don't you just go ahead and pick up some of this grass again, all of this grass in the area, and then Rosette could um, actually pick up the berries for you so you have something to give to your child. This area is a little bit laggy, I've noticed, but um, hopefully that's not going to become too much of a problem when it starts to snow. All I can really do is cross my fingers and hope for the best. So we have a hunter and a gatherer following one of our warriors. Hopefully Hopefully this is going to be a very good match. Oh my gosh, Dandelion, you found another one of these healing fruits, excellent. So we are at least going to be um, able to heal all of the wounds that we sustain in case any nasty dangers pop out. But I think we're getting very close to um, the tree now, so let's set up Dandelion as close to there as possible. Oh no, one of the bunnies made its way down here and it's munching on our berries, of course. That's probably the bunny that they were actually watching way up by the stone. Let's have Roku jump in here and hopefully he'll be able to grab the bunny if it scoots next to the berry bush again, but at the very least that should light up the way enough for our other hunters to come in and find it. Other than that though, I believe that was the very last turn of the day, so let's see what Anna Ismi's last baby is going to look like over here. Cross your fingers, that is going to be another brutal warrior. Oh my gosh, a little girl, and she has some very pale fur too. I believe that is the exact same color that Eve actually had with beige fur in both of her slots. So a 
little bit of a throwback in a way and unfortunately without those ram horns so we're going to have to try our best to pull that back out of their genetics but I think I'll name this little baby Tundra. I think that would be a very very suitable name for her and Squall is going to have to make sure that he keeps her safe now that his mother has passed away. So let's have him clear out some of this grass around her to make sure that nothing can spawn in the area. Um did I just hear? Oh my gosh! What are you doing way back here? No, 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 this is not a good thing. Already we have one of these rogue males to deal with. Oh no, and I was so glad that we didn't have to deal with all of those crippled paws too, but now we're going to have yet another one in our tribe. Oh, Coco, this is not good. Let's sniff around again to make sure that nothing else is in the area, and then we will go to town attacking that guy as fast as we possibly can. We'll have to check his immunity genes too to make sure that that's not going to be a problem. He has G and E. And let's see, oh no, she has G2, so that means her babies might be sick. And oh my gosh, look at this cheeky little notification. One of your females mated with a rogue male and is now pregnant. That is not a notification that I want to see. So let's have Roku jump over here and slap this guy if he gets too close. We don't need them making their way um, down the shore to all of our other females. We definitely don't want to see more of his babies popping up in the tribe. I am so sorry, Coco. I didn't even think that this would be a problem so soon. Let's have Dandelion scoot over this way so that he can not only attack the rogue male but also pick up some of these acorns and then we'll just have Roku stand guard right over here to make sure that he doesn't get any further. We could have Coco at the very least pick up some of this grass I suppose. We don't want him getting too far away though because I don't want to lose sight of that guy. He is right there. Hopefully we're going to be able to take care of him before he gets anywhere else around him our tribe mates. Before we think about setting up a nest for Coco though let's just go ahead and pick up some of our food over here. Make sure that we have enough food to, of course, sustain this baby. We're going to have to make sure that we keep all of our babies safe as well because I believe the birds will spawn on this island. We haven't seen them in a very, very long time, so that's going to be a little bit jarring for us. Let's have um, Cloud scoot a little bit further into the grass, and I think I just saw him move over here again. Yes, I definitely did. We are keeping a very close eye on you. I mean, the one silver lining is that he does have very high fertility, I guess, so we don't have to worry about um, the low fertility is taking over in the tribe. But still, I mean, we don't want those crippled paws, we don't want the short-sighted eyes, and we certainly don't want to risk a sick baby. So all we can really do is just try to keep everyone else as far away from him as possible. Faith can go right next to her mother, and then you are getting so close to Roku, if only you would step like right here, then we could slap you again. And that would do quite a bit of damage because Roku does have a very, very high stat. So we'll turn the camera this way to make sure that we can watch this creature creature way off in the back and then we'll have Cloud just pick up a little bit more of this grass. We could have, um, let's see, I suppose Rosette could actually go right here to pick up this grass too and there we go. I see you little guy. Let's slap you again one more time to get rid of you. Now he only has four days left on his life so at least he won't be terrorizing our tribe for very much longer but I guess that means we're going to have to um, keep a watch for any other potential wandering males. Now since this baby runs the risk of being sick, we're going to have have to make sure that we set up a nest very far away from our other tribe mates just to potentially quarantine the baby in case it does have those double immunity genes. When we pass the day, if a sick creature is standing next to any of our healthy creatures, then they will also catch the cold. So that's why it's very important to make sure that we keep them quarantined. Let's have Coco scoot way over here, in fact, right next to him, a bunny burrow, and oh my goodness, what a day for you, Coco. Now you have a leech too. This is absolutely terrible for you. Um, I don't want to move Roku too far away from this guy and for that matter he only has one turn anyway so he's not going to be much of a help for poor Coco. I mean if only you would scoot over there and take the leech off for us. Is that a thing that you can do? I'm guessing it's probably not. Now we just have you guys way back here and I don't think they're going to be able to scoot their way all the way down to um, Coco's aid either. So I suppose all we can really do is maybe um, have them come over here, pick up some of the grass and apparently find them um, a nest as well. There we go. That's very good to see. You didn't pick up the leech. No, you definitely didn't. I mean, you could maybe pick up this other leech in the water if you wanted to. You could let that guy munch on you, so it'll be one less leech for us to deal with. But I'm guessing you're not going to be that helpful either. We might as well clear out this nest before we go ahead and investigate that other stone. We'll have Strawberry sit right there so she's not too close to the bunny burrow. And then Kira Nute can go ahead and just um, pick up some of the grass around the area, just so that we can use this in the future. It is nice that it's so close to one of these healing fruits too. And really, really, 
you are sitting right on top of that leech. I mean, maybe he's trying. You gotta give him credit. Maybe he's trying to help us out by protecting us from this nasty leech in the water, but it is just not interested on munching on you. It is only interested in our very, very tasty tribe. I was not expecting to have so much trouble with leeches, let alone the rogue males this early on. It has been quite the exciting adventure already on the mountainside, and we haven't even explored half of it yet. So next time, what I would definitely like to do is bring Strawberry and Kiernuta over here to, of course, investigate this very, very strange rock. I am so excited to crack that open and see what's going to be inside. I'm sure quite a few of you already know what sort of things we can find in there. I personally have only seen two of the potential treasures that we can receive from that block of ice, so I am really looking forward to seeing how this is going to shape the future of our tribe. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!